how to create a design such as this in Affinity Photo. There's a few steps, but not many, and I'm just gonna go through them with a new document. So file and new, and I'm just gonna go with the basic document 1920 by 1080. Create a layer, so layer and new layer. And now the history panel, really useful panel. Just go here, gradient tool, select that. I'm just going with fill and I'm, at the moment it's got no type, but I'm just gonna to go to my gradients panel and I'm select a rainbow gradient. Please check on my videos how to create a rainbow gradient if you haven't got that. Well, here's the rainbow gradient. Straight away you've got this and it enters a history. You can enter another one and you can see you got this. Well, the reason is I can now combine them using the history panel. But before I do that, I'm just gonna create a few more. Just very random, just create a variety of different gradients, all with the same gradient, or perhaps select a different gradient, but something that's got a lot of color in it. And you could, of course, combine it with maybe filter effects, maybe apply a twirl or distortion to create even more interesting designs. So once you've done that, it's gonna use this layer. And I can go over here to the history panel and you can go down the side and you see there's these little brush strokes. Well, you can select those and you can set an undo brush source. So click there, then go to edit and fill. And unfortunately, it doesn't appear to be a repeat fill feature, which is baffling, but still edit and fill. And by default, it will come up with this. Pasty 100% normal. Well, I don't want that, I want difference. Also, I want history. That's what this is over here, history panel. That's the source. And you can see straight away now, you've got this interesting effect, combining that gradient with another gradient that's stored away here. And click apply. And you can select one, another one. Just go over here. You don't have to have the same one. So filter and you think, oh, I could do a repeat. No, you have to go to edit and fill. And it has the same settings at least remembers those, so you can quickly apply it. Select another one, gain edit and fill, and click apply. Maybe go to under another one and edit and fill, and click apply. This is a similar way of doing this in Photoshop using the classic gradient. Sadly, there's no classic gradient feature in Affinity Photo, so it would be nice, but there isn't. And if you use the gradient, there's no blending mode. So this is a workaround for that. So you've got this design. Well, this design can now be turned into a pattern. And how to do that? Simply go to the Move tool, select that. Got the layer selected. And then go to Layer and New Pattern Layer from Selection. Anything you've got selected will be turned into a pattern layer. As long as it's a pixel, if it's a, a shape or something, it won't work. You need to convert it into a pixel layer. And then you can resize it. Now, one thing, unfortunately, is always defaults to a non seam state. It just basically creates a pattern with what it's got. But you can mirror it, so you can create interesting designs straight away using that. And you can see you can create all kinds of designs that way. But you can also hold down the Alter Option key and duplicate that pattern. And you can also go over here, and I've just duplicated, holding it down again, the Alter Option key. You can see now I've got another pattern layer. And now you can go to Normal, and you go through and Difference, and you can see you can then create even more interesting combinations very, very quickly using combinations using Blending Mode of Difference or any of the other ones. So now with this done, I don't want to continue doing any more, but you could add 15 or 20 layers. So layer, and you can merge it all visible. A really powerful feature of Affinity Photo, filters and distortion. There's a load of different filter distortions, but this one's really great, mesh warp. You get this warp all the way around, and you can just go here along the top line, and you can just drag it down. You can drag it all the way down, and you can also go into the bottom one and drag that all the way up. Very quickly, you've got that lovely distorted design up. That's what I want, that wrapper design and click apply. Of course, you could create any other distortions as well. Well, what you can then do is you, with that selected, you can go to layer and down here to new pattern layer from selection. It's a pixel layer. Now, if you add an effect 
before you do this, you will get a slight gap in the design, which is not ideal. So if you want to add shadows, etc., add it after you've applied this. So new pattern layer from selection. And now you've got your design. If you didn't, you'd end up with a bit of a gap there, which slightly looks odd, but of course you might be happy with that. Well, you can also go to mirror. So you've got the mirror effect. So it now mirrors it seamlessly and you can resize this, reposition it. But as mentioned, you can now add a shadow effect. I say, don't add it beforehand. So effects, go there and out of shadow and just, just go there, maybe put it about 50, 50 all the way through and click close. And then you can resize this, move this around. But you can also hold down the alter option key and you can duplicate. So you can just duplicate this design and so you can build up quite a complex design. Maybe rotate the design. So you've got that and that way as well. Well, with that, you can then select both those patterns. Both pattern layers can be selected at the same time and you can then resize the entire design. Now you'll notice you've got this design behind, which is not ideal. So I'm just gonna delete them. Now I'm just gonna delete that one, that pattern design, pattern design, and just get rid of that. So all you've got now is that background color and then you've got this design as well. Got your pattern and you can move this around, resize it, maybe make it a lot smaller. Once you're happy with that, you can then merge them. Now you can merge them into a pattern layer using the layer and merge selected. I don't want that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I'm just gonna go with merge visible. So merge visible and it's all merged into one single layer. Well, you can also distort this with another filter effect, which is really good. And that's filters. And again, make certain pixel layers selected. Then go to distort and equations. With equations, you've got two options at the top. Cartesian, which is this approach, the X, Y. But you've also got polar. Polar, you can create some really interesting radial designs. So radial, and you can just go divided by three, like that. And T times five. And you can see straight away, you can create some truly extreme designs. You can also set mirror on. Sometimes it will vary, sometimes depending on the, the edge. And you can see, you can sort and you can tweak it. So you might say, oh, T divided by two, or maybe six, and so on. Literally create thousands of various gradient designs very quickly. And you can also bring in parameters and those sort of things if you wish, but I'm gonna go with R divided by six, T times five. Very simple and mirror and click apply. And there it is. End result, you've got this really stunning design making quite a combination of various gradients as well as using other filter effects as well. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Also, please subscribe. Always adding new videos about Finity Photo, Photoshop, and many, many others. Bye.